Hello my fellow family foodie friends, it's Jackie and welcome back to another week of What's For Dinners. It's fast food week. I am so excited to share this with you. I was really looking forward to this week and every single dinner was amazing. I love fast food. I don't eat it frequently because obviously it's not good for you, but I've always enjoyed making copycats. I have sprinkled those into my What's For Dinners or various videos that I've shared with you guys in the past. And then it dawned on me, why not do an entire week of What's For Dinners where I make fast food copycats. So that's what you're getting today. Panera, Taco Bell, McDonald's, Arby's. Um, there's more I just can't think of. I'm really excited about this and I hope you get some dinner inspiration. So I have washed all my potatoes. I have an onion here to chop for later. But I'm going to use my handy dandy fry cutter. I've linked this below. It works really well. And I'm going to slice these really quickly and get them soaking in a wa oh whoops almost spilled it get them soaking in water and that'll sit for at least 20 minutes before i dry them off season them and get them in the oven i always just cut a little off the end of the potato so that it sits flat on my grid So I'm about to chop this onion. I'm actually gonna chop half of it into big pieces that I can use for my Crunchwrap Supremes. Even though I know that's not what Taco Bell uses, I love onion on my taco stuff. And then the other half is going to go into my Pampered Chef chopper. Elsie's gonna help me with that. We're gonna make them really small and that way they resemble the dehydrated onions from McDonald's. Elsie's gonna just go to town, take out all of her second grade frustrations. Okay, so these have been soaking for a minimum, probably about 35 minutes now. I'm going to drain them, dry them, and season them. McDonald's doesn't season their fries with much. I'm just using salt and olive oil. I'm just gonna drizzle and sprinkle and call it good. I will salt them again when they're done. So I went real easy on myself and got these third pound patties that were pre-made from Aldi. I'm gonna season them with black peppercorn and a garlic sea salt. Simple on both sides and get them on the grill. When it's 40 in Michigan, you grill. Okay, for those of us having the Big Mac salad, we have our finely chopped iceberg lettuce, sesame seeds, dill pickle chips, minced onion, Thousand Island dressing, and shredded cheddar, and then I'll put my beef burger right on top when that's done. So I'm gonna show you the pretty salad before the beef makes it ugly, but there's my Big Mac salad, just missing the beef. That's still in the oven. Ta-da! Favorite dinner all week. The salad was amazing and tasted just like a Big Mac. Mmm, I'm loving it. So there's my salad, my fries, and the Diet Coke. Of course, if I have McDonald's, it's Diet Coke. I am about to put a pound of pinto beans. I'm gonna rinse these out, but I wanted to show you guys them in the bag so you knew what to look for if you're gonna make them. The bag for one pound looks quite small. A can of diced chilies, a tablespoon of minced garlic, a teaspoon of cumin, a half teaspoon of salt, I put that all together, one onion quartered, and then five cups of water or chicken broth, or I did mostly water with a little bit of my homemade veggie stack, mainly because I had some in my fridge. This is vegetarian if you don't use the chicken broth. So once I have these rinsed, I'm gonna layer everything in my Instant Pot and get it going. Okay. 
Okay, an hour and 11 minutes past the time of cooking. I'm finally gonna open this up and I'm gonna remove excess. They suggest removing about a cup of excess liquid, so I just dip a, it doesn't look like there's a lot, but once you dip your stuff in there, you can get it to drain. And then I'm gonna use my food processor. Before you dump your liquid, make sure you save it in case you wanna thin out the beans once you mix them. So cheese sauce, beans, or meat can go on the bottom. And then on top of the tostada shell, you can have sour cream, lettuce, tomatoes, peppers, and then we have salsas on the side. We're also gonna have beans and chips on the side. So here are two variations. We actually have refried beans under this one and no meat, because my daughter doesn't like meat, but she opted for tomatoes and onions. And then my middle daughter has the meat and the beans, but none of the tomatoes or onions. So really you can just customize these however. So folding the large tortilla over the toppings is the most important part because that gives you the secure hold. And you wanna make sure you have shredded cheese in the middle because that will melt and kind of seal your whole tostada together. You're creating pleats in the large flour tortilla, and then you're gonna flip it really fast onto the hot griddle. You can do it. Just like KFC, I want to make sure we have lots of mashed potatoes for the base of our famous KFC bowls that we're making at home. And that starts with lots of peeled potatoes going in the Instant Pot. That's how I choose to make my mashed potatoes around here. And the potatoes are rinsed and they're covered in water. We seal the Instant Pot. We are gonna do high pressure for only eight minutes. And I let them sit here for a while and then I'll drain them and add my goodies to it. And then I keep them on warm. So I like to let the potato pressure release naturally. Otherwise you're gonna get a ton of starchy water shooting out your top. Okay, so after an hour and 20 minutes, this finally released pressure. I checked it at 55 minutes. It was still pressurized. So sometime in the last 25 minutes, pressure release. That's because it's very full. I'm making lots of mashed potatoes. So, so now I'm going to drain the potatoes, add milk, butter, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Okay, so that butter is going to melt in there. I'm going to put the lid on and let this set and then I'll mash it again right before we eat. I add a little more milk. I don't measure anything that I add in here other than usually a stick of butter if I make a lot of them. These are really simple. I'm just cooking this according to directions. Mix it with cold water and heat until it's thick, stirring the entire time. And then I'm just heating this up in a small pot on the stove. It's really simple. <laughs> Colonel Sanders ain't got nothing on me. Okay, so the first step in making this bread is warm water and a teaspoon of dry active yeast. Okay, so now you can see I have all the flour wet and we're just gonna let it sit for half an hour. I'm gonna cover it with a towel and we'll be back 30 minutes later. So with the rest of this flour, I might not use it all. You just add it in a tablespoon at a time. This is a half cup and then two teaspoons of salt you add in at this process and we're gonna get going. I'm 
look how beautiful that dough is. I absolutely love making bread dough. This beautiful dough has doubled in size. We're gonna push the air out, fold it into a rectangle, and let it sit again. And you take the top and the bottom and you fold it together. And guess what? We let it sit for another entire hour. Okay, we are here for rise number two. An hour later. Once again, bigger. Seriously Sharp White Cheddar, which we got this at Costco, and we've had this for a while, so it was one of the reasons I wanted to make this dinner. And then I had to get um, sliced white American cheese. I'm just gonna chop this up since it's already um, really thin. I don't think I can really grate it very easily. So there you have it, there is a lot of cheese prepared. I'll move the flashlight. Okay, so these definitely are not the same shape all the way across, but we're getting ready to put them in the oven, people. I totally am okay with like learning curves and learning to do things better. This is just my first time. Look at that cuteness. He just went and put his arm around her because he loves her. Hollow sound, very crispy all over. See, it doesn't look so much prettier now that I buttered them. It tastes so good. Does it? Yeah, I take, I, I take a bite of the crunchy crust. Okay, so my noodles are almost done, and once they're done, I'm gonna melt butter, whisk in flour, let that thicken up. Then I will slowly, and on lower heat, add the milk. Again, let that thicken up a little bit, and then I'll add the mustard hot sauce, salt and pepper, and all my cheeses form my cheese sauce and then I can add the noodles back in. This is all according to directions for a recipe I found and that is linked below. See my bread is already done, just waiting on this. And then we'll serve it with an apple. And add in my milk, slowly. Okay, so I have the hot sauce and the mustard. I don't have Dijon, so I use stone ground. Salt and pepper, pepper was optional, but I love pepper, so it was not actually optional. Whoa, all that cheese. Uh, this is me excited for white cheddar cheese. Okay, so here is my cheese sauce. It looks and smells amazing. Um, you can see the pepper in there and the ground mustard is thicker than if I used just Dijon, but since I only used what I had, it's a little bit on the speckled side, but it smells really good. And I'm excited. Now we get to add the noodles in. You guys, this is so creamy and it did not come from the microwave, if you know what I'm saying. Sorry, Panera, no shade. And in true Panera fashion, you have to tear the bread apart, right? You can definitely taste the sharp cheddar. It is really good. And the bread is perfect. If only it looked better. We are on our way to Jimmy John's and this is a very easy dinner, so it's not gonna go super in depth, but you buy day old bread. You get all the toppings you want and you load them and you use Hellman's mayonnaise. Perfect Jimmy John's sub. Jimmy John's, we're gonna get started for ya. Hi, can I have three day old breads, please? Alrighty, can I get you anything else? Nope, that's it, thanks. Okay, $1.59. Thank you. $1.59 for three large loaves of bread. They're 
perfect for subs and you feel like you're eating Jimmy John's, so I'm not gonna get you some. So stale old bread is not cut, so you do have to cut it. Perfect, perfect. Love Jimmy John's bread. Okay, so there's really no right or wrong way to build these. I have pepperoni. So I have pepperoni from Walmart, provolone. This is the pre-sliced stuff from Aldi, cucumber slices. I will be putting pickles on mine. And to me, I have to have Hellman's mayonnaise and I'm gonna add some lettuce to it. I also sometimes do onion. I just don't have onion right now or tomato chopped. So I'm just doing simple and we serve it with chips. So really easy. Okay, for the turnovers, I'm just using the Pepperidge Farm puff pastry sheets. I had to pull these out of the freezer about 40 minutes before we're gonna use them, so they're just sitting out here to thaw. My puff pastry has thawed. I have them both laid out. I'm gonna cut them each into quarters and put two tablespoons of cherry pie filling, and then we'll use egg white wash on the entire thing so it seals together and browns nicely. Okay, so I have a cup and a half of powdered sugar, two tablespoons milk, and a teaspoon of vanilla, and this is gonna be my icing that I will just pipe right on top. This icing recipe, as well as the puff pastry step instructions are linked below. I put my icing right in this baggie, real simple, nothing technical, and I will snip the corner when it's time to ice and pipe across them. Definitely reminiscent of the Arby's turnovers, and if you love those, I can tell you, you will love these. Okay, so I have the waffle fries in the oven. I have my chicken breast fillets in the air fryer. And bonus, we got seven this time. Last time I got four, and I had the tip to kind of feel around. They are smaller than last time, so I bet it is more weight-based, but I have seven, and we don't need big ones, so I was happy about that. I have my brioche buns, and then we have extra hamburger buns, and this is a really easy, quick, come-together dinner. Not much explanation needed, but these are the items we used. Aldi, Walmart, Aldi. 10 minutes, flip them, 10 more minutes. Our final night of our fast food week and I have the buns ready, I have lettuce and onions for our chicken patties. I'm actually just pulling out some yogurts for an easy side. We have the waffle fries as well 
and then I have the pepper jack and provolone, mayonnaise, ranch, chicken dipping sauce, which is very similar to the Chick-fil-A sauce, and honey mustard, and then of course pickles, so everyone can build their sandwiches they like. When I had my Big Mac salad, we also had burgers, so anyone that didn't want to have their burger on a salad um, could have a hamburger, and then we have these buns left for um, my son or my daughter who doesn't put the meat on her. She might just want a plain bun instead of brioche. I'm not sure, but my three-year-old really doesn't know the difference. To, you know, he'll be happy with this. So we just have everything set up. The french fries are done, and it's a really simple meal. We throw it together and build it however you want. your type of thing. I actually made a copycat taco pizza once. What fast food meal would you have added to this week's list? Let me know if you're going to try something like this. It was super fun and my family was actually really excited to get on board with doing this. I hope you guys got lots of inspiration. Go make your fast food at home. It won't be quite as quick but it certainly won't be as expensive either. Thank you so much for watching. Ciao down and ciao.